Well, Mr. Tier, we're, we're recording this at lunchtime on Budget Day itself. So you've had, obviously, you delivered your budget, but you've also had some feedback. How do you think it's going so far? I think at the, at the moment, people are appreciating the very difficult circumstances they're in and they're being realistic. There's all, always those who would uh, want more, expect more, but then how do we deliver that? We only have a finite budget and how we carve up that budget or distribute that budget is always going to be subject to, at times, quite a heated debate. I feel that the budget we presented is fair and equitable. It divides resources right across the whole community. It doesn't impact unduly hard upon one sector of the community, but we've also given a clear direction of travel as well for the next three or four years. And I think that's important because it will help to instill confidence in the community. And we have to do that to ensure that the island the island business sector continues to grow, continues to prosper and continues to generate revenue. I suppose the main criticism from some of the MHKs was they didn't have a lot of input, a lot of time to have a look through it and give their thoughts on it. I can see which way they came, uh, or which the way they're coming from. The difficulty is, uh, and I acknowledge it, that they are briefed on the Wednesday. But um, after the briefing, both myself, the Chief Minister and the individual ministers are available. So if any member would like to come and see us, they're very welcome to. And in fact, some of them have. They've asked for clarification on some of the figures in the budget, and we've been able to help them with it. But especially for people coming in for the first time who don't have the background knowledge, who don't have the experience, I can see that it is difficult for them. Now, of course, they get briefed, and someone broke your embargo on it. You know who? Uh, I'm 95% sure, but I, I wouldn't... Um, uh, say who it is, who I feel it is, but I think the overall principle um, is abominable. People um, ask to be included and we do our best to brief them on a confidential basis, but it's difficult to justify us continuing to brief people on a confidential basis if that confidentiality is not respected. And yet you have to inform them. I don't know what you can... Well, you tell me, what can you do to get around this problem? Well, all we can do is um, we can give them the headlines but not the details and I think that will be doing them a disservice. But what's happened is now only part of the story was put into the public domain. It's raised unnecessary fears, it's raised unnecessary anxiety, and if the whole picture had been presented, if they had to wait until the whole picture was available, then people in the wider public could make up their own minds. So it wasn't backtracking then, because that's how it's appeared slightly from the hurried press conference that was held last week on Thursday to then ministers putting on their Facebook pages that maybe things aren't as bad as they first appeared? Well, no, it's, it's not that. Of course, ministers are more aware of the whole position um, than other members of Tenwell. But having said that, uh, I feel the unfortunate thing is what people thought might be the bad points were broadcast and the better, more positive aspects, which Mr Caron has now dealt with, were ignored. And I, th I think that's been... Very naughty, putting it politely. How do you rate Mr. Caron and how he handled this then? Mr. Caron's doing well. He's I mean, grown. would you believe you were saying this this time last year? No, Mr. Caron's grown into the job. He's doing very well. Uh, and I, I think now um, he probably appreciates the difficult position that we've had over the years. But no, he's growing into the job, he's doing well. And um, I thought the press conference he did last Friday was first class. Okay, well, in part two, we'll talk about the budget itself. Okay.